Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Administrator Masterclass Sneak Peek. My name is Tunde Disu, and you are very welcome to today's program. On today's program, we'll be looking at an area in the, in the life of a church or ministry that is very, very important. During one of our previous programs, I mentioned that one of the five growth points of a church is the children's ministry. The children's ministry. It is vital, it's important, not just because the children of today are the leaders or the adults of tomorrow, but because the children's ministry is a, is a vital key in the life of any church and any ministry, not just in terms of growing or growth numerically, but the impact that uh, it can bring to, to, to a church, to a ministry, and because it's a seed into our future as well as adults. So the children's church, it's a vital part of any organization, uh, and it, it would go a long way to determine how much growth a church or a ministry is experiencing, and also whether that growth is sustainable, because for as long as you have children who are happy in a children's church, the parents will come. The parents will come because the children will want to go to church and the parents won't want them, to, can't let them go on their own. So the parents will have to come and bring them to church. So the children's church is it's, it's critical, it's important, it is very important indeed in the life of a church and ministry. Every church wants to grow. Every church desires growth, and rightly so. But the question is, as a church or as a ministry, how prepared are you for that growth? What are you doing currently to facilitate the growth? Or what are your plans going forward that you have in place to res that will result in the growth that you're looking for or you desire as a church. And that is what we'll be looking at today, especially as far as the role of the, ch of the children's church is concerned. Remember, the administrator is an organization that is, that is vast in experience over 45 years collectively of managing, supporting, administering, and setting up churches and ministries and see them grow from one location to a multi-location uh, organization. So this, this is coming from a depth of knowledge as, as the previous uh, topics were as well. So the church, the children's church, what are you doing as a church leader, as a pastor, as a founder, even as a, church, as a children's church minister or teacher, what are you doing or what can you do to grow that children's church? And those, that is what we'll be looking at today. And we'll be looking at various topics or various points that will facilitate not just the growth, but will sustain that growth going forward. As pastors and leaders, as founders and teachers in the children's church, you have to bear in mind that there are three keys to growing your children's church. The three keys to growing your children's church. The first key is that you have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself. You have to be in a position where you are ready, where your, 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 your bowel is big enough to contain the growth that you so desire. I'm reminded of the story of, of, the, of the widow in the Bible with, with the prophet, and, and there was the, the story about the flowing of oil. For as long as she had an empty container, the oil was flowing. But as soon as she ran out of containers, the oil stopped. It's the same thing in the life of a church, especially as the children's church is concerned. If you as a leader don't have the heart to accommodate, to welcome, to nurture, to see children grow and, and become 
what God wants them to be, then it will affect your growth because you don't have the room to accommodate the growth. So as a leader, you have to prepare yourself. Number two, you have to prepare the children. You have to prepare the children. Children are very friendly. They will respond to the degree to which you prepare them for new incomers, for new visitors coming into the church. So un unless you prepare the children and put them in a position where they are eagerly looking for newcomers, where they themselves are inviting their friends from school, from play, from everywhere, then you are not ready for growth. Number three, you have to prepare your environment. You have to prepare the environment that you are bringing or you are expecting these children to come into. And now I'm just giving you the, head, the, head, the, the headlines here. There are so more details involved in all of these areas that the administrator will be happy to sit down with you and talk you through and help you through and guide you through and, and put parameters in place. To, to, to realize this, uh, this growth that we, we, so, we also desire. So what are the ways? I've given you three keys, but what are the ways of making these keys to work? What do you have to do practically? What are the practicalities of seeing your desire for church growth become a reality? The number one is you have to pray. It's interesting that we have to, I have to say that a church has to pray, but this is a specific prayer point. You have to pray for the growth that you want. Now, what do I mean by that? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's his church and he will build it. But have you not heard a lot of pastors, a lot of leaders, a lot of founders who say, my ministry, my church, it has become their personal possession. And for as long as it is yours, then you are saying Jesus should stay out. But if you want him to grow that church, if you want him to, to, to grow your children's church, you have to, in prayer, invite him in to grow the church. Now, you also must remember that growing the church is not just in the numerical aspect of it. Because as your children's church grows, the need for more volunteers will be there. The need for more resources will be there. The, new, the need for a bigger room or a bigger space will be there. The need for more training for your teachers, for the volunteers, will be there. So it's not just about growing numerically. The more you grow, the more other uh, uh, parameters, other aspects, the other things that will undergird that growth will be required. And that is why you need to pray and ask God to come and deliver and supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So number one thing you need to do if you want to see your children's church grow, is that you have to pray. God is the source of life. He is the, the one that will grow the church. So put, put, stop worrying yourself. Just go down on your knees and pray and ask him. And he will come and build his church. Because remember, the children's church is not... Uh, it's not a, a, another aspect. It's a part and parcel of the church that Jesus has come, that he promised to build. So the number one way, the number one practical things you can do or you have to do to see your church grow, sorry, your children's church grow, is that you have to, you have to pray. Number two, you have to make your children's ministry a welcoming place. You have to make it a welcoming place. And you have to do that intentionally. You have to be intentional. You have to do it purposefully. You have to go out and do it intentionally. You have to be intentional about, for instance, greeting the kids and their parents when they bring them in the morning. 
Yes, it's okay to have volunteers at the door. It's okay to have teachers waiting in the classrooms. But you have to make these people feel welcome. You have to make them feel appreciated. You have to make them feel honored by you going out there to welcome them. Because remember, when parents bring their children to the children's church, they are transferring their responsibilities as parents to you as a teacher to look after them. But you don't, they don't want to transfer that responsibility to, 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 to an empty vacuum. Rather, you have to be there. You have to be visible in the hallway. Don't just sit in your office or in the classroom and wait for them. You have to be visible in, this, in the hallway. You have to be available at the welcome center where the, the registration is done. Just so that the people coming, the parents can feel at rest in their mind to leave their children with you. You have to go out of your way to smile, irrespective of the, 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 the running about that you have to do and all of that. You still have to carry a welcoming smile on your face to welcome these people. And in some instances, yeah, you see, the best person to welcome another child is a child. Obviously, under an adult supervision. But you'll be amazed how many of these children are happy to see one another on, on a Sunday morning as they walk through the children's church. So if you want them to feel immediately recognized, welcome, and appreciated, put some children there with uh, some adults to supervise them, but put them there to welcome their fellow children. If you foster a welcoming and friendly environment, it will shine through and make your children's church brighter and more inviting. So that's the second practical thing you have to do. Make your children's church or your children's ministry or your kids' ministry, make it a welcoming place. Number three, make child safety very, very obvious. Make the safety of the children, make it as obvious as possible to the parents. Again, this is another area where the administrator can help you in terms of training, for instance, safeguarding training, first aid training, and all of that. The, the administrator can, can organize that so that when the parents, when they bring their children, their, their mind is at rest, that the teachers, the volunteers, and the people that will look after their children, they are trained, they are qualified, they are, they are, they are, they've been checked for DBS and all of that has to be in place. But it's not good enough to do that and hide that in your closet. You need to make it obvious so that the parents can see that this is a safe environment for their children. The truth is, a parent's priority when they drop their children at the children's church on a Sunday morning is not about their spiritual well-being. It's the number one priority of a parent is the safety of that child. The question they're asking, am I going to come back and be able to pick up my child? And will he or she still be intact just the way I brought him or her this morning? So you have to make safety obvious in everybody's faces so that people can see it, they can recognize it, and they can follow it through. Make your attention to safety obvious. How do you do that? Have your safety policies in place and in, in the open. Have your safety policies in place and in the open. Get your parent, get the parents and your team of teachers have the habit of enforcing safety rules. No running about. Don't go near that. And all of that. Let everybody know where the boundaries are as far as safety is concerned. Do things that will immediately signal to the parents that this is a safety, this is a this this is a safe environment for their children. Use things like name tags. 
because how would you know which parent brought which child? But if you have name tags where the child has a tag and the parent has a tag and the two will have to be reconciled before that child is released after the service, the parent is then at, their minds is at rest knowing that unless this tag is not with me, my child is safe. If you have an open space, use room dividers so that the parents will know that the older children will not run over the younger ones. Put things in place that will make the parents know this is a safe environment for them. Have adults to supervise the doorways. What that says to the, child, to the parents is that there's a control as far as access points are concerned. There are controls in place at the door of incoming and outgoing so that the children can't just wander off or somebody can't just come grab a child and walk away. All these that are things that you have to do practically to make the environment safe enough for parents to sit down in the main church and be at rest knowing that their children is in a safe environment. The number four way or the number four practical thing that you can do to grow your children's church or children's ministry is to create a friendly environment. Create a friendly environment. The, the, initially, I mentioned about make your children's church ministry a welcoming environment. But here you have to create a friendly environment. What do I mean by that? Put yourself in the position of a parent. Put yourself in the position of a visitor. And put the heart of a visitor on. And walk through your children's church uh, auditorium or your children's church space. Walk through that I'm a visitor. I'm a first time visitor for instance. And I'm coming to this church. And I want to go take my child to the children's church. What am I looking for? Start from outside and ask yourself some questions. Because as a parent, that is what you would do if that is not your church. Ask yourself the following question. Is the main entrance clearly marked so that visitors know where they're going? Are the bathrooms easily located? Because at some point the children will need that. Is there adequate signage to find the class or the area where my child should go? Because the children will have to be, to be segregated a, into age groups. There's no point in a parent, a new parent, wandering the, up and down the corridor trying to find where are we going? Which class is my child going into? No, there has to be clear signage saying this is year 2 to 3, this is year 5 to 7, and all of that. It, it, it's part of making the environment friendly for people to want to come to. Is there a greeter at the door? Now you may think, uh, what's that got to eat? It's got everything to do, especially when the person is a first-timer or a new visitor to your church. Is the hallway very late? The classrooms, are they cluttered with different things or are they overcrowded and all of All these are practical things that you can do as a church or as a ministry to grow your children's church. Be honest with yourself. This is your church, this is your ministry, this is, and you are asking people to bring their children into it. Then you put yourself in their position and ask if you will bring your child into that environment. The fifth, the number five key thing you can do to grow your children's church is communicate. Now particularly this point is relating to the, the pastor in charge of children's church, the head, the, the, the leader of the children's church, the, the head of department of that unit or whatever it is, whatever the nomenclature is. Those in charge of the children's church, this particular point relates to you. Communicate the activities, the situation of things, the position of things in this children's church. Communicate that to the church leaders. Let them know where you are as a ministry, as a unit, as a department 
in the church. If the church leaders don't know what is going on in the children's church, they will just assume that and everything is fine when everything might not be fine. For instance, there are so many churches where the children's church is manned only by ladies. Nothing against the ladies. But these children also need men's influence. But if you as a, you as a leader of that unit, if you are not communicating that to the church leaders, they will not know to staff you with men, to send men to be in the children's church. So you need to communicate. You need to communicate. You need to develop regular training for your volunteers. But you can't do that by yourself. You have to communicate that to the church leaders, to the, the pastor in charge, so that they can make these resources available to you. Number six. Again, these are areas where the administrator can come alongside and support you and join you and help you to look at all these parameters and how to put them in place so that it can, it can, it can just lift the atmosphere around your children's church. Because like we said, it is a vital growth point in the life of a church. Thank you, Monique, for joining us. Number six, don't isolate the children's ministry from the main church. Don't isolate the children's ministry from the main church. In most cases, the children's church is almost like a satellite church far down the road somewhere and far from the main activities in the main church. Once you do that, you are not helping the children's church to grow because the first thing the parents are wondering they have to go all that way to drop off my child and then go back to the main church and then come back all this way to pick them up immediately you are giving them reasons not to bring their children to the children's church and because they don't want to take them into the main church guess what they'll stay at home they will stay at home so Make, don't isolate the children's church. Let whatever is happening in the main church permeate across the children's church, the teens' church, the youth church. Let the, the language, let what's going on cut across everybody so that when the children, when they get home, they can discuss what they have learned with their parents who are learning a similar thing in the main church, obviously at different levels. Don't isolate the children's church. Number seven, make children's church fun to be. Make it fun to be. Your primary goal on a Sunday morning is to teach the, the word of God to the children, which is great. But the kids are not showing up to be spiritually fed. They, okay. Let me ask you, when you were five, six, maybe seven years old, and assuming you were attending a church there, on a Sunday morning, were you looking forward to what the Holy Spirit is going to minister? Or were you looking forward to seeing your friend and run around and play with them? You see, children will learn in an environment where they feel free and they are happy. And one of the ways to make them happy is make it fun. Don't be too deep. It's not an avenue for you to practice your, your, your preaching ministry. Make it fun. Every week, even though you have your syllabus, you have your curriculum of what to teach, within that teaching, add some bit of fun. Make it memorable. You see, the children will remember the jokes that you play and the play you had with them quicker than they will remember the memory verse that you gave them to study throughout, the, throughout their one hour or 40 minutes that they're in the children's church. But you can do the same thing with that memory verse by making it fun, making it, the activity something that they will enjoy because the truth is they will remember that longer than they will do. If all you, 
you, you, you say to them is to just sit down and repeat the memory verse. So make children's church fun. If your program is not fun, it's not for kids. If the program, the delivery, the agenda, the package, if it's not bringing fun, then it's not for kids. And the moment you, you, you deprive them of the fun, you won't have the opportunity to reach their hearts with the message that you're trying to, to, put, to put across to them. So make the children's church, make it fun. If you want to attract more kids to your children's church or children's ministry, make Sunday a fun day. And the kids will invite their friends. The kids will invite their classmates. And their classmates will bring their parents. And both your main church and your children's church will grow. I hope this has been helpful. I hope we have all gained something from it. And remember, you don't have to do all this by yourself. That's why the administrator is here to support, to help, to assist, to come alongside you and establish this seemingly simple but vital principles to put them in place, to monitor them, to guide them, to do training, to, to champion your cause and give you a hand, a hands up as you strive to see your church and especially your children's church grow. So for more information and for that initial no obligation consultation, why not give us a call today on 0771 265 3428? That's 0771 265 3428. Or send us an email to the hyphen administrator.org. Info at the hyphen administrator.org. I will look forward to hearing from you. Until next week when we meet again on this platform, this is Tunde Disu once again saying, we're here for you. Give us a call. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.